Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. Today the church does celebrate the third Sunday in Advent, and I am basing my sermon today upon the gospel pointed for this day, coming to us from the 11th chapter of the Gospel of St. Matthew, which I will read to you right now. Now, when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, Art thou he that should come? Or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John again those things which ye do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. And as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, What went ye out unto the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind? But what went ye out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in kings' houses. But what went ye out for to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet, for this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, my dear friends in our Lord Jesus Christ, Bear in mind in this passage, as we just heard, coming to us from the 11th chapter of the Gospel of St. Matthew, St. Matthew was kind enough to, again, describe to us the events that unfolded. And as we heard told, of course, the John that is spoken of in this passage is, of course, St. John the Baptist. And St. John the Baptist found himself in prison, as we know, because, again, he dared to speak out against Herod Antipas, uh, because it was Herod Antipas that had gone to Rome and seduced the wife of his brother Philip and brought her back again. She ended up coming back, leaving Rome, and ended up again after Herod got rid of his wife, he ended up marrying his brother Philip's wife. And of course, this was Herodias. And St. John the Baptist, again, was not one who would see evil in front of him and stay silent. On the contrary, when he saw evil in front of him, he preached against it. And of course, this irritated not only Herod, but his wife, Herodias, greatly. And as a result, St. John the Baptist was thrown into the dungeons at the, again, Macarius prison, which was in the mountains overlooking the Dead Sea. And this is some place that, again, when St. John found himself, again, imprisoned, this was some place that certainly he, to a man like St. John the Baptist, this was a, 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 in a many ways a fate worse than death. Why do I say that? Because here he was enclosed in a dungeon, a dark prison, chained up, unable to go out and about. Again, St. John the Baptist spent his life not only going out in the wilderness, but going in the towns and the villages and the cities, preaching and teaching about God, excuse me, about God. And as a result, again, here he found himself imprisoned, literally, chained, literally, in a fortress, in a dungeon, not able to do the things that he spent his entire life doing. Now, as we heard the question here, when, when again it says, St. Matthew reminds us, when St. John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent 
two of his disciples to our blessed Savior. Now, the question that St. John the Baptist had his disciples asked, have some people that read this passage, read this question, they kind of scratch their heads and they say, well, why would St. John the Baptist send his disciples to ask this question? St. John the Baptist had seen our blessed Lord with his own eyes. St. John the Baptist had baptized our blessed Lord again. So this was someone who was some a, a, a person with great faith. So why would he ask this question, or rather have his disciples ask this question? Some commentators, again, say that there's various possibilities. Who knows? Some commentators say that, again, St. John the Baptist had doubts. I, I doubt that greatly. Some commentators say that St. John the Baptist was impatient. Eh, probably. That's a good explanation. St. John the Baptist perhaps was anxious. Yes, I'm sure that is very true. Because bear in mind, the Jews were indeed anxious to see the Messiah with their own eyes. And of course, St. John the Baptist, who had spent his entire lifetime looking for and anticipating the Messiah and doing the works of God, certainly he was anxious as well. But there is a fourth explanation of which I, I think this is probably the case. St. John the Baptist sent his disciples to our blessed Lord so that they themselves could see with their own eyes and hear with their own ears what our blessed Lord had to say and respond. I think he did this for their benefit more than his, in other words. And the response that our blessed Lord, again, gave to them certainly proves this, at least in my opinion, because listen to what our blessed Lord said. He answered them with the following response when they said, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John again those things which ye do hear and do see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, and the dead are raised up. And the poor have the gospel preached to them. Again, the emphasis that our blessed Lord made was, Go and show John these things that I have done. Without a doubt, dear friends, and don't misconstrue my words, but without a doubt, our blessed Lord spent his some 33 years here on earth going about and preaching and teaching and talking and telling folks about the greatness of his heavenly Father. But he backed up every word with action. He made the blind to see and the deaf to hear, the lame to walk, and the poor he cleansed. Again, it is certainly actions that mean more than words. Because again, we can preach, we can teach, we can talk a good game. But if our actions do not match up with what we say, people will not listen to our words, will they? If you don't mind me saying so, I dare say this is why folks do not trust politicians. Because so often politicians, and they get elected because of the words they speak, but so often, their actions do not match up what they preach, so to speak, what they say. They talk a good game, 
But that's about it. Our blessed Lord, as I've said in the past, he not only talked the talk, he walked the walk. Again, in the Old Testament, we hear in the book of the prophet Isaiah, the 29th chapter and the 18th verse, and in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book, and the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness. And again, Isaiah continues in chapter 42, verse 7, to open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison, and them that sat in darkness out of the prison house. Again, dear friends, our Lord did all of these things. He not only talked about them, he did them. And again, most importantly, he brought those that were sitting in darkness out of darkness. In my secular job, I work as a counselor for the Department of Corrections, and I work in a juvenile facility. And so often I say to the boys that I talk to that I'm in charge of, and I say to them, it's not these bars around the windows that make a prison. It's not the barbed wire and the fences around the facility that make it a prison, as much as it is the prison of your own mind that keep you as a prisoner. We could be totally scot-free in a certain sense with no bars, no chain link fence, no barbed wire around us, and yet we could be even more of a prisoner than if we were in a literal prison. This is because, again, the darkness of the world that we heard made reference to, the darkness of the world that Satan likes to keep us in. It's the darkness of the world that we are enveloped in. And yet, it is our blessed Lord that is the light in the darkness. He is the light. And as we hear in St. John's Gospel, chapter 15, verse 5, we hear our blessed Lord speaking of himself when he says, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him. The same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. You see, dear friends, it is through our blessed Lord that we have our strength. It is through our blessed Lord that we have our power. It is through our blessed Lord, again, he is the one that guides us and gives us light in this time of darkness. He is the one that we are called to look for, to look toward, to again, look with great anticipation. And we do that by preparing our hearts, by preparing our minds, again, for the coming of the Lord. And this is what the holy season of Advent asks us to do, to prepare ourselves, to prepare our hearts for the coming of the Lord, the coming of the Messiah, the King of the world, the King of the universe. And again, to help us realize that he is the one that is in charge of our lives, of our hearts, to make him the number one priority. And so this day, dear friends, as we continue again along our journey towards Christmas, as we grow closer and closer, let us, as I state, take this opportunity in these coming days to prepare our minds and our hearts. Do that by reading scripture every day, praying every day, 
And even if you don't feel that the words come to you, spend some time in silence, in silent reflection with our blessed Lord and dedicate that time to him as much as possible get rid of all the noise and the clamor all the distractions that the world has to offer and offer and dedicate that time to God may God continue to bless you dear friends in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Ghost Amen